Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me for today's little chatty video. I have been traveling so much lately with retreats and stuff, which is why you haven't had a video from me for a while. It's also why I am very much just home and in a hoodie, um, just grounding down and taking a bit of time for myself. Um, but I really wanted to film this video for you. So after the video I filmed with Rhiannon, if you haven't already watched it, please do, that was talking about um, vegan diets, but in from a scientific and nutritional point of view. So Rhiannon sat with me and we spoke through things like, um, like protein, supplements, um, getting the most from your diet in terms of being vegan. Um, and then when I put it out there asking for people to ask me questions, I had a lot of people just asking about my lifestyle in general um, and how I've coped with changing to a vegan uh, lifestyle. So I guess there were some things that I wanted to chat through with you guys that I didn't answer in my video with Rhiannon. So hopefully this will answer everything you need to know. We're gonna cover things like my favorite recipe books, um, how I cope with eating out, how I cope with like judgment from friends and family, um, where I stand on leather goods um, and things like that. So yeah, we're gonna get straight into it. So I, first of all, I wanted to chat about food. Um, so my favorite foods, my favorite recipes. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm not going to go into um, nutritional information in this in this video. So please do watch my one with Rhiannon. This is going to be sort of like I say, more around the yummy foods that I like to eat. I didn't really find it that hard um, when I changed to be vegan. So I've been vegan for nearly a year now, and I was vegetarian for three years before that. Um, I will say I was very, very lucky and um, just really, really happy that Rob also went vegan at the same time as me. And that has honestly made our lives so much easier. But Rob was eating meat three times a day prior to going vegan. So he went fully like, just cut it out, which was incredible. And I wanted to get him on this video, I guess for you guys to get a bit of perspective from somebody that went from straight away eating meat. But sadly, he's an island, so um, there's nothing I can do. I can't get him here for this video. But he he went vegan for the same reasons as me, um, all around kind of like animal cruelty, animal welfare, um, and then the next sort of stage for us on that was the environmental reasons. So it really had nothing to do with um, our health, even though I do feel healthier for it, it was really to do with where I stand on um, the way animals are treated and I'm not believing that um, we stand any higher than animals in a hierarchy and therefore should be able to um, slaughter them, eat them, drink their milk, etc, etc. So I don't want this video to kind of be me forcing veganism upon anybody, but I do want to share with you as much as I can about my lifestyle um, in the hope of maybe inspiring one, two of you to either make that shift to go vegan if you're thinking about it, or even just have like two or three vegan days a week, which is so easily done. So for me, I, in the mornings, I'll normally have a smoothie. Throughout the summer, I'll always have a smoothie, like a veggie smoothie. I'll throw in some oats, some protein powder to kind of like bulk it out with um, everything that I need. Um, in the winter, I will have oats, um, porridge. I actually recently learnt um, baked porridge is a thing. So you soak the oats with any like nuts, seeds, cinnamon, ginger, soak them in the fridge overnight, add in any fruits like figs and things like that. In the morning, you literally turn on the oven, put it in the oven for half an hour, and you get this like baked porridge, and it is amazing. Our chef on, um, on my most recent retreat made it, and it was so good. Anyway, I'm just gonna chat you through some of the um, recipe books that I really, really love using. So this one first, this is called Fresh India. And it's, um, it's not actually vegan specific, it's vegetarian. Um, but there are a lot of vegan options in here. And if you are kind of quite good at just knowing substitutes or you can Google substitutes, you'll pretty much always find a way around it unless obviously it's got egg in it, but there are ways to bind um, without using egg. So Fresh India is a really, really great book. Um, my babe, Ella, um, who you probably have all heard of, Deliciously Ella. So she actually has a new book out which I'm going to show you. Oh, the table's probably going to go wobbly. Oh. Um, 
So I've been using lots of Ella's books for ages, actually since her first one, I think this was one of the first ones since this came out. You can see there's lots of little post-its in there of recipes that I keep on coming back to. I do recommend this. When I first got this book, um, the only thing I would say is that some of the ingredients, you kind of need to be going to health food stores and things like that, um, which isn't accessible for everyone and it can be expensive. So that's just something to bear in mind. But the new one is more simple vegan recipes um, and I've only just got this so I haven't made, I've only made one thing at the moment so I'm gonna get through this but she is honestly um, a genius and yeah I, I love what Ella is all about so I recommend her books. Um, the Pharmacy Kitchen have a book that came out. It's, I've done one of the bowls from this. It's very much kind of like Buddha bowl style, lots of different things, um, which is great in the summer. Um, but I haven't kind of fully gone through it. Oh, goji ketchup though, sounds great. I literally just landed on that page, which sounds really nice. Um, the only thing I find, I I'm, I'm, have a really bizarre phobia of mushrooms. So, and you'll find being vegan, it's quite hard if you don't eat mushrooms. Um, and I literally, the page four I turned to had a big mushroom on it. Um, but yeah, so that's the Pharmacy Kitchen cookbook, which is also quite good. This is one that I haven't actually used, but I've had for ages, and it's just this big vegan one. My issue with this is that I like pictures. I like there to be a picture of every single recipe. And even though it has lots of pictures, for me, it just doesn't have enough. So, um, you know, kind of pages that look like this where I just want to see what my meal is meant to look like. Um, but I will, at some point, go through this. And they, they, the way they look is quite simple, so that's quite a good one. Um, my One of my favorites, though, is by the Happy Pear Boys. Um, these guys are incredible and I'm really hoping to meet them either later this year or next year. So this is uh, David and Stephen Flynn who make up the Happy Pair. They're based in Ireland. If you are ever over there, they do have a cafe as well who I, and I recommend going to see them. Um, but uh, yeah, this is, it's veggie. It's not, I don't think it's fully vegan, I'm gonna say. I wanna say it's just veggie, however, I have, as you can see, flicked through this and I have noted many, many vegan um, options. So in case it's not fully vegan, it says veggie on it. Let me have a quick look. Mm. I don't know, it doesn't say. But still, there are lots of things in here that I have made and I'm going to make and it is so, so good. So there's just some recommendations of cookbooks if you're kind of thinking of getting started. Being vegan can, um, can be kind of quite lazy and unhealthy if you're not willing to kind of just make a bit of effort because especially if you're used to eating meat and you're the kind of person that's just sort of quite happy with, I don't know, chicken breast and uh, a bit of sweet potato and some vegetables, that's very sort of like just single component based, shove it in the oven or steam it or whatever it might be, whereas being vegan, it does require a little bit more experimentation, a bit more adventure in the kitchen, but that doesn't mean it's hard. And then you know that you always have really simple things like stir fries and fajitas and baked sweet potato, like covered in veggies and stuff like that. There's always kind of like the really simple options. And Rob and I just have a long list of meal, our favorite meals on the fridge and that we can go to at any given time. Um, and that really works for us. And when we have friends over, which isn't really that often, but when we do, we just make vegan food and they are super happy. Like my bean chili goes down storm. So yeah, I, I genuinely don't, everyone's like, every one of the hot things that people say, is, you know, is it hard? And I honestly don't think that it is. It's just a shift that you have to get used to, like anything. Okay, so my stance on uh, leather goods and animal goods in terms of fashion, I obviously, prior to going vegan, um, I owned like a leather jacket, I owned leather boots, I owned leather handbags, and um, whilst I haven't thrown away any of those things, um, just because I don't really feel, believe in waste, um, I haven't bought anything new and don't intend on buying anything new that is um, of an animal product. So um, ha having said that though, my leather jacket I did, and some of my leather bags I gave away to friends and family just because 
the smell of leather now makes me feel a little bit new. So um, I, I don't I don't know. I just it just didn't sit well with me. So I, I gave those away. But I do still have you know like old leather trainers and um, old leather handbags that I, I do still use, and I'm okay with that. I'm not. Other people will have different opinions, and that is great. Um, I have friends that will buy um, secondhand leather goods. Again, I haven't done that yet, but I don't, I, and I'm not really too sure where I stand on it. I haven't particularly seen um, a leather item that I, um, I desperately want that's secondhand, but yeah, I, I don't know kind of like how I feel about that. But at the moment, I am not um, not buying anything that's kind of like leather or like sheepskin, um, what are other ones? Um, anything like that. I can't really think. Leather's kind of just like the main one. Um, but yeah, my belts that I've owned from ages ago are leather. But now you can get so many um, vegan alternatives that it just makes, makes it really, really easy. And when it comes actually now to clothing, I'm trying my hardest to be a little bit more sustainable and ethically friendly. So kind of shopping either secondhand or like reusing old stuff, but altering it maybe, um, vintage, um, charity shops, things like that. Um, trying to kind of like buy things from retailers that are uh, sustainable and eco-friendly. But I find that hard. I will be totally honest, I do find that hard. I mean, I know that's more environmental than it is vegan, but for me, it's kind of all part of like this same shift in my life that I'm trying to think about. So, uh, so yeah, that's kind of where I stand on all of that. Um, just to touch upon, I wasn't actually planning on, but to touch upon uh, beauty, I am, so first and foremost, um, cruelty free is the most, important thing. Um, I still have uh, products, makeup products, because I don't use makeup that often and I'm not really like massively hot on, well I am hot on skincare, but I have a lot of it, but it takes me quite a while to go through it. So um, with kind of like pigments in lipsticks and uh, things like that, I do still have uh, things that I'm using that probably have kind of, you know, like um, the animal pigmentation and maybe like honey and things like that in it. Um, but I'm okay with that because I'm just using them until they've run out. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of brands now. So Bare Minerals do uh, lots of really amazing vegan products. Um, the Body Shop, really great vegan products. Inica, great vegan products. There are so many good vegan beauty brands, skincare brands, makeup brands, so you can definitely um, make your way around it um, and navigate it to kind of suit your price point and get something that's both good to your skin and good to the animals. Eating out has been um, quite a tricky one, if I'm honest, because not not because anyone else has made it tricky, but prior to going vegetarian, so this is something that we've been transitioning for a while, so prior to going vegetarian, I always, Rob and I always went for a steak. That was kind of like our go-to um, celebration meal. So if it was a birthday, we went for a nice steak. Um, and if it was like we were celebrating something, we'd go for steak. Now, obviously I stopped eating meat um, three, four years ago and Rob now doesn't eat any meat. And so I kind of feel like there aren't that many vegan restaurants or places that serve like, a, you know, a comprehensive vegan menu that are the kind of places where you can get dressed up to go to, especially not where I live either. And I know that there are some amazing vegan cafes and restaurants in London, but I there's just... I'm yet to find one with like the wow factor. So actually that's one for you. If you're watching this and you know of kind of like a really beautiful um, vegan restaurant that can be sort of like used as a bit more of a celebratory place, kind of not somewhere you go every day, but somewhere you go for a special occasion, then I'd love to hear it. So comment below and let me know. Um, when it's just me and Rob, we're fine. Like I'm, I love pizza and all of the kind of chains do, um, uh, vegan cheese now so like Pizza Express and Ask Pizza they all do vegan cheese and then other places like we have um, a really nice uh, old pub in Stamford where I live and they I just have their pizza it's like a lovely homemade wood fire oven pizza place and I just have it without cheese and I just have loads of veggies on it and if I'm totally honest do I miss cheese no is that kind of easy for me to say probably yes because I wasn't like 
in obsessed with cheese before that. Um, I was just obsessed with pizza, but I can still have pizza without it, so I, I'm happy. I think what's hard when it comes to eating out is when you're eating out with other people, and I know that Rob has found that hard with the boys, and I I think that because I'm very much, I'm, I'm a female and we talk more anyway, sorry guys, but uh, from what I can gather between my group of friends and Rob's group of friends, it's definitely more of a more open conversation. And I think because Rob's a guy and he doesn't drink alcohol and now he's vegan, there is that kind of peer pressure or at least that, that pressure on himself where he feels like, oh, I don't want to be the one that's got like another thing to kind of like bring to the table. Um, whereas I'm like, hey, I don't drink and I'm vegan. Can we go to this place so I can have something good to eat? And my friends have been amazing. You know, all of my friends now, whenever we book to go somewhere for dinner, they will always say, Kat, this is what they've got for vegans. Are you happy to go here? And I'm not gonna be fussy. I think when you're kind of going out, if there's just, if there's one option and it sounds good, then I'll go. Um, if there's just a couple of options, that's absolutely fine. And to be honest, a lot of the time, my friends are actually quite happy to go to um, a vegan restaurant and try something a little bit different. Um, I just think that from Rob's side, it's been a little bit trickier. Um, and again, my family have been, when it comes to eating out, have been really good and really understanding. However, they're not that understanding of really like why I would do it. Like they accept it, but they'll kind of like keep making jokes and things like that, which do get boring after a while. Um, and that's something you just kind of have to roll with. Like, you know, it's a different generation and people aren't always gonna understand your life changes. So you just need to be super kind of like strong in why you're doing what you're doing and just stick with it. And also be willing to kind of like chip in. And if you're going for a family meal, be like, hey, do you know what? I'm not gonna have what you're making, but I will stand at that oven with you and I will make my own thing. Like when we went vegan last year, we came back from Australia and we were having Christmas dinner at my grandma's with all of my family. It helped my cousins like an amazing chef and he was doing the dinner. But bearing in mind, we sprung it on them sort of like four weeks before, no, two weeks before Christmas. We were like, hey, so um, we're back from ours and we've now been vegan for three weeks or a month. Um, can Christmas dinner be vegan for us? And they were incredible. Like my mum, bless her, like made like this onion gravy. Like my cousin did this roasted cauliflower with tahini and almond dressing. They didn't use um, butter or goose fat for any of the potatoes or the vegetables. And nobody else suffered. Everybody else had what they wanted to have, but they just made really tiny adjustments to fit in with us. And I will forever be grateful for that Christmas because it was one of my favorites because I felt I loved the dinner. I didn't feel like I was, um, I was doing what felt good for me. I was kind of really like standing strong on like what I believe in, but I didn't feel like anyone else was having to give up anything um, because of me. So yeah, I think that, but it can be tricky, you know, since then, like, you know, my dad takes the mick out of me all the time and just doesn't understand it. You know, in my dad's mind, it's like, well, why don't, why do you eat a plant? A plant's alive, it grows and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, that's just something you kind of just have to take on the chin every single time and work with. And like I say, just be super kind of like strong in, in the knowledge that you're doing what feels right for you. So the last thing I wanted to cover was a question that I get asked so much and it's, do I feel better for being vegan in terms of like my health? And I have to say, I massively do. I, I didn't actually, when I was vegetarian, I wasn't having huge amounts of dairy, but I was obviously still having enough and dairy's quite hard for the body to digest and definitely a shift from when I was eating meat to vegetarian, that was a big shift. And I, some, when I was eating meat and dairy, I'd have nights where I'd like go to bed and it wouldn't just be kind of like a fullness from, you know, overeating. It was like, you know, really gassy and feeling like really bloated and just taking like a good, like 24 hours to really kind of like feel like I'm back to normal and I just don't have those nights anymore. Unless I've just really gorged on loads of loads of food and treats and stuff, it's quite, it's very rare that I have those nights whereas before it was happening kind of like once or twice a week. So I can definitely say that my body feels better for it. I, I think I digest food better, um, like my like bowel movement is better. 
Um, yeah, I think that, you know, for Rob, it probably took a bit more getting used to because it was such a big shift in his body going from meat to meat and dairy to nothing. But for me, I, yeah, I feel good. I never feel um, without energy or anything, but um, ha while we're talking about the nutrition side of it, I will just say again, that if you haven't watched that video with me and Rihanna, and I will link to it below and you can go and watch that because that's super informative on this side of things when it comes to your health and diet. So thank you so much for watching this video and listening to me chat on. Um, please do comment below and kind of let me know where you're at, maybe in your journey. Maybe you're thinking of transitioning, maybe you're thinking of just adding in like one day a week and just just know that, you know, no one needs to make you feel guilty about the choices you make. Um, but I really do recommend just doing your research and you know, it was I I was 30 years old when I decided to go vegan and it was just, I had watched numerous documentaries and read numerous things and it just took, the, you know, one person to say it in a particular way that really resonated with me um, and that's when I kind of made my shift. So just do what you can, um, know that if you're doing it for the animals and you're also doing it for the environment and you're doing good to your body as well. Um, but yeah, comment below, let me know um, how you are getting on. If you have any tips for me um, on vegan restaurants in London, that would be great. Or actually even around the UK. Um, Rob and I are kind of based uh, in Stamford, so we can kind of travel around anywhere if we want to go for a nice meal. So yeah, thank you so much and I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye.